Hello. Yo. We should be live now. We're live now. We'll see what how many uh, late people are staying up. Yeah, absolutely. So we're live live? Yep. Nice. Any viewers yet? Nope. I haven't shared no. it. I'm, I'll share it here in just a sec. Okay. I'm walking back upstairs. We had to had to get a door off the hinges. We're painting our half bath tomorrow. Oh. Well, Sam is. We both can't fit in our. It's our half bath, not a full bath. Gotcha. <clears throat> Let's see, share to group. You shared to our group that already? I am doing so right now. All right. I'll, all right. I'll get to. Well, we got some people. Player. I'll get to players and collectors here. All right. Well, today what I don't know. Today wasn't terribly nuanced. Yeah, I really wasn't actually expecting a rules update article today. Like, it came fairly early, didn't it? Like, for, compared to the the other ones. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, ta-da, quick rules update. So, it's, uh, this one wasn't as, I mean, I guess this one was just as impactful as some of the other ones that we've seen. Right. But as far, like, it was impactful, but I don't know how much of an impact it makes on, like, individual figures. Well, I mean, so let's, do we want to start to talk about hindering terrain then? Um, or do we want to give it another minute? We got five people. Yeah, so we could start with, uh, we'll, we'll skip the bolts and targeting part, because that's how it starts on the article. We'll, we'll just jump into some of the more mundane parts of this rules change uh the first one is hindering terrain um they decided hindering terrain is just too hindering for movement purposes movement yeah so basically they wanted to change it to where it only affects uh, affects range so essentially you can move through hindering terrain now it does not make you stop it doesn't mean when you're in it you get half movement anything like that it's literally now hindering line of fire when a character makes a ranged attack and a and a hindered line of fire is drawn between the attacker and its target modify the target's defense plus one for the attack so that's a pretty mm -hmm. significant change like yeah i mean that's huge right but it you know i I get, so I'll go ahead and say, right, like, I get why this is incredibly, uh, I mean, it's straightforward, but it's also a little bit divisive, right? So, the so I'll start with this um, tidbit. Mm -hmm. The first team, the first team that I had some big success with was um, the, uh, what was, what's the, um, What's the team ability that's prob for DC? Um, the let me team. give an action to the yeah the old team ability. Oh. Uh, oh, I'm blanking. Hold on. Yeah, so there was a Green Lantern that had that team ability, and he had Cosmic, and I play Nick Fury, Phalanx Drone, and um, the Orange Battery. Right, so. At that point, right, objects were still hindering from movement. This was pre-2017. Is it Crime Syndicate? 
Yeah, the crime syndicate Green Lantern. Yeah. So thanks, Jason from Tr- <laughs> from Trinity War. So you know, at that point, right, right, the orange battery could take away improved movement, and you know, I could place place objects on a map with a ladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one of those elevated maps, Ryud, or the other one, um, and people couldn't move up the map, right? So it was like incredibly sucky if you played a, a foot base figure or the orange battery that made all your figures essentially foot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a little bit more, you now that's retired, a little bit of time has passed, right? But it comes down to like, it, it, as a judge, it, it simplifies a lot of questions, right? Like, um, you know, if you uh, running shot out of hindering, right? You've got a half, half, right? So it's like, what's a point five, point five? So it's a lot of math and it's a lot of nuance there for new players, right? Uh, it's it, and I don't even want to say for new players, right? It's a barrier to entry to say higher level casual play, even. Um, you know, if if you bring your favorite gunslingers, right, and somebody puts you on a map full of grass. Or if you bring your favorite team of flashes and they bring the map full of grass, that's not fun, yeah. you know, to, to say, well, these are a bunch of great figures, but I can't move anywhere with them because of the grass. Right. Um, you know, and the grass being the hindering terrain. So, you know, it's half and half, and then it's sidestep into hindering, sidestep out of hindering. So, like, hindering for movement it causes a lot of questions and a lot of confusion. Um, so I can certainly see why they got rid of hindering terrain for movement. I just wonder if it's just <laughs> like, I get all of that. I get, I always hated, uh, let's see if I can find the map. If they've got old, yeah, the sewers map, uh, the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sewers map back when this was legal um, I have it up on the screen. Back when this map was legal, uh, heavy objects were considered hindering terrain for movement purposes. And so right. I, I always hated those instances where I had a hypersonic flash or, uh, z- z- let's see, Zoom I think may have had flight. But, you know, there was a lot of flashes that just didn't have improved movement. So it's like they're throwing a folding chair out there and now I'm suddenly stuck. Like, I can't get past this folding chair when I'm the Flash. Like, that seems ridiculous to me. But on the right. flip side, on the flip side, it does take a strategic option off the field because you can no longer, like, smoke cloud to make people have to stop because it's, you know, hindering terrain of sorts. Like, you can't strategically put out... Like, what does that do for figures like Franklin Von Doom and different figures that rec- could put out different terrain markers right. as a benefit? Like, you still got blocking, sure, but, like, you could also throw out some sort of hindering to just kind of, you know, if I see your team doesn't have a lot of improved movement hindering and you're close range, which hopefully there's not a lot of those, uh, I'm just going to try to, you know, slow you down. And... It's not even right. slowing you down as much anymore because they don't have pushing damage anymore. So it's like, it's it, it was the combination of those two, I think, that made it annoying. But now it's like it's gone. So I, I wonder if, how much of a strategic piece it, that's going to be that's going to be missing. Now, you still got stealth. You still got everything for shooting purposes. That's the same. So you're still going to get plenty of questions about higher elevation shooting down to lower elevation in hindering and all sorts of stuff. I just, I don't know if I'm actually, like, I've been pretty positive about most of the changes they've made. This is one that I'm kind of, I understand, but at the same time, I, I I don't know if the loss is worth losing that strategic um option advantage yeah Yeah, strategic option yeah advantage yeah yeah. but i i think it's gonna make map design different i think it's gonna make 
yeah, I think it's just going to change the way we view maps now. Like, maps like the cemetery, Glencrove Cemetery, which is the wide open map, but it's full of hindering. Like, before, mm -hmm. you would have to move around the hindering to get used to that, but now it's just, you just move straight through. Uh, oh, um, the, uh, where is it? The wrestling one. WWE Arena. Yeah, the arena. No, 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 no. There was another one. It it was the. It's already retired. That's right. It was the bo uh, the boxing arena. What was the really popular oh, one? Yeah, that yeah, that had the rows of uh, hindering. Yeah, it had the rows of hindering up at the beginning, and I always remember that was just a a pain in the butt. Like I actually had to start planning around that. I forget what what set or. What that was well, it was from. a sporting. It was a sporting arena. It was. It, it was the map that they gave out with the boxing ring. Oh, here it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you had the first row that was open, and then a bunch of hindering. So you really had to think uh, more about where you're placing your objects, how you're going to be moving, because you had to work around that. Uh, thank you, Jason, again for reminding me it was a sporting arena. So it's, you know, that aspect is gone, and. I don't know. That's that's kind of annoying. I mean, it makes maps also like um, Iceberg Lounge. Like, I can't try to, you know, if I'm going against some seals, I can't try to strategically place my objects because I know they have to stop in the hindering terrain or something. Now they could just walk right. straight through it. So, it changes things. Yeah, because we were thinking, yeah, on that map, we were using, like, you know, thinking about how to place our objects, place our jet terrains... Yep. You know, so that's that's specifically strategy is gone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I get it. it it's going to be a it, it's nuanced, right? I mean, obviously, it's a big boom to all of your foot foot people, right? Uh, your boot, your boot symbol. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's it takes some nuance out of the strategy. I mean, like, so. You know, I think one of the questions I got was, you know, am I happy about this one? I would say I'm probably the least happy about this one in particular. I just don't think it improves enough. Like, most of the other ones you can argue it does something cool outside of the removing of the powers temporarily thing. Like, most of the other changes I can say, okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. But... Honestly, I mean, I understand mm -hmm. from a judge standpoint, but at the same time, I don't remember... Like, those type of questions, though, were easy to answer and easy to understand, I feel like. Sure, you got the questions more often than not, but I don't feel like they were that bad of questions. But I guess they were enough to warrant removing them, uh, removing hinderings, so... Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, obviously, this does nothing but open up the game. It doesn't make the game more uh, inclusive, accessible, accessible. Yeah, inc yeah, yeah. The so, barrier to entry is a lot lower. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other change uh, that we'll talk about for a little bit is knockback. They've basically gutted knockback and made it significantly more simple, which is kind of the the name of the game, right? For all of these changes, so. Knockback now, and let's see, do they have how it's read? Um, let's see, is that what this is? Step 5, knockback sequence. Characters are sometimes knocked back by an especially hard-hitting attack. When a character is knocked back, the attacking piece places them up to three squares away. So it doesn't have to be just three. You could do up to three. Um, from the character that hit them, if someone would, would block a knockback character, they aren't knocked back any further. So... The only way is to knock back a character is if they have the knock back key phrase as part of the power or you roll doubles. Basically, they took away the whole... Um, they took away the damage, which is what a lot of people have had um, some concerns about. And Peter, very, very good point that this hurts Danger Room Magneto, who love to use Exospecs to pulse wave people around. Um, that does hurt. Um... But, yeah, that kind of that kind of like rips out that whole alpha strategy on the robot team on the Sentinel factory, right? Yeah, I mean, did, Magneto got some other buffs. Um, the whole pulse waving, 
knocking back into walls and there's a few other characters that really enjoy knockback we talked about it in our, our group chat about how now knockback is not a way to get around certain stop clicks remember that was the way to get rid of Star Fox, wasn't it like it was back well in the... yeah so yeah so that was uh, um that was with the chase cyclops or even or even like if you position poorly with uni um, you know, you could hit him to a stop before a stop click and knock him off of elevation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Star Fox was, you know, you had to knock him back far enough into a wall or, you know, down an elevation with Chase Cyclops. Now, some benefits to the changes. It's no longer tied to damage. So if you do an attack and they reduce it, you, but you roll doubles or you have knock back, I believe you still knock them back up to three. I don't think that changes. If if they still right. charge that stuff, that that you know that negates sure. it. But I think the up two three um, is you know saying that you know if you knock them back one in the current rules, you could knock them back up to three. I think that's a little bit of a of an assumption mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that emphatically at this point, but. Uh, if it's true that you could knock them back up to three, then I think the power gained. Um, uh, that's that's what they say the core rulebook will say. It's going to be up to three. Yeah. So, I, I do. I think it's it benefits general knockback. You can now, quote unquote, knockback with in cap or some other powers that didn't really deal damage as long as you're attacking. Um well, no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I think it's still going to be in there if you have to have to take the damage to knock them back. I, I, I don't think so at all. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe I'm reading it different than you. Yeah, I don't think it's tied to that. I think it's just you hit them. The core rulebook lets people know that the knock, that knock back pushes the character away by three squares. They stop if they hit for something. For casual kitchen table play, that's enough. So, like, I feel like it's just, period, you can knock them up to three away. It doesn't matter about damage. If you hit them for one, mm. knock them three away. If you hit them for six, knock them three away. And they might errata, like, I think they've mentioned errata in maybe some people, or they could. Like, Chase Captain America comes to mind, the one that has the, you know, super powerful knockback. Maybe they'll let you double it, because that's what they were doing with the, the new theme team probs and a few other things. But from my understanding, I think it's just you hit with if as long as you have the not back key uh-huh. phrase or you roll doubles, you can not back the character up to three. So here's a so here's a good thing. Here's a, here's a here's one of those things where I'm just noticing something. They didn't mention Captain America as an errata. True. But they but they did mention. Um, uh, what was it Captain Venom as an errata? Yeah, they've got they they list Starfire out here. They went really DC heavy with this, um, with the little figures that they reference in this. Uh, now, uh, right here it does say you'll notice there are some differences. Knockback characters don't incur additional damage, and there's not a calculation to determine how far back they'll go. So it it is just a strict up to three. I move you one, two, or three, and that's it. You get to choose. Sure. Um, real quick, David Herberger says, "Will will power still ignore knockback?" I assume so. I assume things like super strength, charge, combat reflexes. You know, they're trying to empower close combat, so I think that kind of, you know, takes away from that if they took those powers away. They're not getting rid of knockback, so I don't see any reason those powers need to change. Um, if anything, they might be yeah. better because it might be, e- it, I guess, technically is going to be easier to knock people back because, you know, it doesn't matter how much damage you deal now. So I assume those powers are going to going to change, uh, stay the same, I mean. Yeah. Uh, Peter Melton also mentions Onslaught, which is another key thing. He's the one that has the, the really long knockback if he hits with a close yeah, if you Yeah. Well, that one, and if you miss me, if you miss him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right here. I'll look it up to quote better. Because yeah. I, I don't... It's a power few people, I think, get to use. 
Onslaught can knock back characters that can use charge or combat reflexes. When Onslaught hits with a close attack, yeah, that's why I'd never really say. You can close attack mind control, but still. A hit character unequips all equipment and drops any held objects, and after resolutions, Onslaught knocks back a hit character nine squares. There's a question. How would that work with mind control? Oh, well, no, right now? Like, no, how did it work? No, with the new rule. Right now, you don't deal any damage, so there's not really any knockback. I, I'm, I'm thinking just going forward, now that it's not really tied to damage, it's just you hit when you have the knockback key phrase or you roll doubles. So if I mind control yeah. you and roll doubles now, do I move you or, you know, knock you back three and then do the do the whole move and attack with the mind control? Uh, maybe. I I'm assuming to... that knockback will still be optional. So yeah, I think it, I think we, I'll have to look at what the sequence is because this is step five knockback sequence. So I don't know if they're changing the order of right attacking. Like maybe it's a different order now. I'll, I'll look that up here in just a second. You know, so I think I think realistically though, like onslaught's fine. Yeah. I agree because it it just says knock back up to ten squares. Yep. Or nine, nine. Sorry, nine. Um, so I don't think it has anything tied to do with the knock back key phrase. It just says you can knock back up to nine. So maybe there's a clarification or something like that. But I I think he's okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let me look at let me Ooh, look at Captain America real quick. Hey, so this is some insider, not insider stuff. What am I talking about? This is some snoop in here. They reference in the article step five is a knockback sequence. Step six yeah. used to be the knockback sequence. It's because I bet you they don't care about damage. So knockback now happens before damage happens, potentially. Maybe. Well, because, this we'll have to see. Yeah, because it, so, it used to... I, oh, go ahead. I, I think... So I think... Um, Captain America Chase is fine as well. Okay. Does it say because double he just or... Said, he just says knock back. When Captain America knocks a character back, add 10. Okay. Excellent. So they now, don't they, even... may, they They may still errata him to some, some extent. But I think he's fine. Yeah, he just doesn't deal damage with it now. He just knocks you back 13, or is it just a strict 10? I would, you know, it says add 10 to it, right? Yeah. So I assume you could choose 1 to 3 and then add it back, right? Because there might be a strategic reason you want to go 11, 12. True. And, ooh. So what does this do to Force Blast? Uh, I assume that power is going to be reworded. I mean, I know Force Blast gives the static knockback, I think, right? Or is it only when you do... It's, it's a roll. Well, it's I know roll. it's the roll, but I didn't know if it had any static... Like, yeah, knockback, I mean, roll a 1d6 for... or something. No, Force Blast gives you knockback key phrase. Yeah. And then power, roll a d6, target, an adja a target adjacent opposing characters, knockback equal to the result. So my assumption is that Force Blast... Um, so... It could stay the same because nothing in here says that I'm reading the article here again. It just says when a character is knocked back, the tasting the place the character attacking player places them up to three squares away. So force blast could stay the same. I think that is a little odd. Well, they don't reference force bl uh wait, here we go. Uh, they kind of mention it. They mention Force Blast a little bit with Starfire. She can flurry two characters at once with her two bolts, and her Force Blast means she can knock them back. Now they only mention the the key, the key phrase. They don't really mention the actual action right. of Force Blast. So yeah, I think you're right. They may could just leave Force Blast alone, or not. Nah, see, I don't see them just letting you still have to oh, roll yeah. a d6. Well, and you can still roll a so one. So Force Blast could be changed. I think there's a couple options. Force Blast could be changed to half the roll. Adding on to three? Right. or <laughs> No, 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 no. Just 
it's it's you roll it instead of one through six, you get one through six, but half. What so if, like uh, like like regen? See, so I think you, I think they're so, trying to do it with the rolling. Like they want to try to simplify it. Well, maybe it just gets changed to a static one through three if you power action it. Or you can knock them back up to six. And you just choose one through six. Just choose however many you want to knock them back. Because Force Blast is one of those ones that we could probably agree needs something. Because Force Blast is just not generally great. It's right. decent, but you're how often? Kind of like Leap Climb. How, I could count maybe on one hand how often I've used literal Force Blast, not the knockback part, right. but just actually right. using it. So yeah, I mean, I could see that having some sort of change, but I could also see them keeping it the same. So. Yeah. Um, those were two pretty big things, but the bigger thing that affects that actual figures is how they're handling bolts. So, so essentially, hold on, one. oh, go ahead. So they mentioned that. The, sorry, they mentioned Starfire in the article too. Yes, yes, Rebirth. Hmm. So, all right. So they they errated Captain Venom, and they mentioned Starfire. I don't know. I'm building a mental case in my head that retirement may not happen this year. Yeah, you're back on that train. Uh, you know, I'm. Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, I can have a conspiracy <laughs> theory. This is a this is a pretty safe conspiracy theory that I, I can share. Yeah, we. It's not. It's not, it's, not da- it's not damaging. Yeah, and we're about a month away from when they normally would announce uh, when rotation happens. It's usually the beginning of March end of february that they make those big announcements hey heads up in july we're rotating so we still got some time um they could be waiting to see how things go and seeing how if things tournaments are able to happen again starting sooner rather than later i don't know um or they could have had this decided since last year so but yeah, that is a good theory, Starfire out there. Now, even when the set drops and the rules change, there's still two months of legality for whether it happens or not. Because it's this kicks off, I think, May 1st is what they said, right? So, Oh, whenever Wonder Woman drops. I thought they said May 1st was going to be the day the rules start, like regardless of when Wonder Woman drops. I thought that was like the f- Article Zero. I, I may be wrong. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, The bigger thing that affects actual characters and can make some characters more interesting is that they're changing how bolts work. Uh, As you know, with bolts and targeting from range, you can choose two targets if you have two bolts. And, you know, however many bolts you have is how many targets you could choose. And then if you hit everybody, you divvy up the damage however you want between those three or two or however many. Well, now they're given the option, because once again, they're trying to raise the game. It's very arranged game currently, as opposed to close combat. They're trying to make it even the playing field a bit. So now close combat figures can utilize bolts if they have them. So what that means is if I charge with super strength... Oh, I guess if I super strength with one object, I hit target two people. That's kind of weird, but I guess if you got a big object, that kind of makes sense. Um, so if you charge to go up and punch somebody and you have two bolts, you can then technically attack two people and you split the damage between them. Remember, anytime you use bolts, you have to split the damage between the targets unless your power says otherwise. So this is a, this is more of a buff for your hybrid figures. The ones that maybe start with a running shot, fall to charge at some point. Like, there's some Thanoses, I think, that do that, Apocalypse. You know, you're half what I call, like, hybrid. The ones that you can, you know, go back and forth between the dials. Or between the attack styles. So, this isn't going to... I personally think this isn't going to be that big of a deal. Because I don't think there's a lot of figures that have multiple bolts and are close range. Like, you're going to want to get close range. But... I could be wrong. I mean, I, I tried looking out there, and I, I'll look out there now, Dan, if you want to talk about um, how you feel no, about so, it. Yeah, so I think it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, they mentioned that they're going to be doing zero-range double bolts in the Wonder Woman set. 
mm-hmm. essentially. And I'm not, maybe not specifically double, but more than one. Um, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I get it. I'm fine. That's cool. It's a boost to those figures. You know, Flurry. Flurry's a bit better, I think, a, a little bit. Um, you know, Quake was already multi-target. You know, Super Strength should Ooh. should be should be worded correctly. Um, I can give my like full breakdown for Jay Sanzen on uh, the progress of Uni throughout the day. Yeah, go ahead and do that, and we'll talk about some questions and what people have been talking about that your daily yeah, your sure. daily uh, uh, Uni update. Right, yeah, because I mean, you know, I was talking about you know Uni's not modern, but like it's. He's my he's still my barometer of like what a good figure is for me personally. So obviously with no knockback damage, you can't knock him off of a elevation and pop him. Um, I've had that happen to me uh, one or two times, I think. Um, and then additionally, right, we've got the hypersonic double bolts, and now we're twelve five with our close combat expert at one hundred and fifty. So now we're hypersonicing, double punching someone uh, for five damage uh, in situations maybe where we can't uh, get a line of fire on them for range. So I think uh, I think almost every day, except for the perplex day, has been a boost for Uni in the new rules. Yeah, um, yeah I was going through it like close combat expert, willpower changes means he can self-leadership means he doesn't get popped if someone outwits his willpower and gives him a second token in cap or whatever obviously a third one could on the in, uh, pervious click mm-hmm. um and then what else was there i don't know like i don't know several other ones that i'm just losing track of but today was a double buff with the knockback and the double bolt punching so um, are you going? Do you have some pulled up or something that have like charge and double bolts or more than one bolt? Uh, David Herberger brings up the new Dragon Man. He has three bolts, CC, and a giant. Now he has running shot, so that's kind of a negative. But he's got running shot with CCE, which is kind of weird. But still, that means he's eleven for four and three targets. That's not bad. That's pretty good for 65 points that's on click two so he'd have to get down to click two um but yeah like well they mentioned they mentioned they mentioned that it helps figures throughout going down their dial too right and it's a nerf definitely for pogs like your figures where you can just swarm it's a little bit of a nerf to them because you could have figures that are just now okay maybe you swarmed me and i'm now not able to run away and double target you so I'm I'm trapped. Well, okay, now I could just punch three of you at once, as opposed to running oh, away because you based me. I guess I'm just kind of looking through three bolts and above right now. Yeah, I'll do the same. Um, and I guess that's a big boon for like um, end cappers, assuming that end cap's going to stay the same. Yeah. If you can just cl- if you can just close end cap a bunch of people, um. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I think this is a boon for... Um, oh, David wanted me to look at the 30-point dial. Ah, 30-point dial has charge, quake, CCE. So that's what he was meaning. The 30-point dial for Dragon Man. I got you. I got right. you, David. I see now. That makes a ton more sense. Um, yeah, I, I, I think... This is one of those changes that we may not see a big impact now because none of these figures really saw... Like, they weren't building figures for this new change. Um, But they are going forward. Uh, Funny enough, I was talking to Aaron Morgan and we were talking about how Starro, his other not-so-great dial, is a little bit better. Um... Because he has a power action, make up to five close attacks, and then he's got triple target. So if you were in, you know, in range to do some close attacks, you can. Now you can't target anybody twice, so it may not be that helpful. But at the same time, it's definitely interesting. Um, you five close attacks with three bolts. Yeah, but you can't target anyone more than twice. 
if you find yourself surrounded by 15 figures, it's the perfect time to rock and roll. Yep. Uh, well, I'm looking like, so like the new Kokoa, you know, has eight range triple bolts, right? But, you know, he could get swarmed, right? And But he can also do his portal thing. So he might be able to portal into close. Um, so I, I like that. Um, the, the new Fast Forces Spider-Man starts with charge and double bolts and you know, that, that 12 attack from yeah. uh, Absolute Carnage. Um, El- Ellie's super giant. That's the weird uh, vampire dial. She starts on 11 attack, 3 bolts, sidestep. Only 2 damage, but still... Oh, that allows you to close attack, triple target, mind control, right? Yeah, should, should. Uh, Leonardo da Venom That's has a... four, has, has double bolts with charge as a 60 point dial. So, yeah, I would say this is a big buff for mind control then. Because there are instances mm-hmm. where you're going against some ESD figures and you're like, man, I'm right up next to them. I wish I could just close attack mind control, but I can only choose one person. Well, now you can just choose mm-hmm. the same. So, I like that, yeah. That's actually pretty good. Well, and then, so your Black Widow chase, you know, mid-dial, so you charge mm-hmm. with uh, ex- exploit. Um, well, let's see, where is she? Sorry, I'm just popping off here. And I think anything with, like, hypersonic and double bolts, so it's like Emperor Vulcan, um, Prime Jolt from Captain America. Yeah. Um, you know, even, uh, that MODOK, that, uh, ACM, Aaron Morgan had me buy two, had me get a second one of, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's got sidestep and mind control, but it's seven range triple bolts, right? So that, that's big for that mind control up close. Oh, definitely. Uh, and with the, with the giant reach. Yeah. I think the key takeaway from this is that it's a buff. There's not really any downside to doing this. Is just giving us an extra option for when we're close attack. Because you don't have to use it, I don't I don't think. You could just normal close attack one person and do all your damage for that. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, David Herberger mentions Red Goblin gets a little better with two bolts and a greater chance to steal energy. That's true. Anything to make Red Goblin better? Because he is a figure that I've mentioned before is cool, but... I feel like they could have done better. <laughs> like, I wish they had done a little bit better because in the comics, he is way stronger than they show on this dial. Like, way stronger. Right. So. Yeah. But once again, um, you'll see figures come out with this type of thing. They already mentioned in the Wonder Woman set. And this might be something to, you know. When we're seeing the previews of the Wonder Woman set, remember, hey, she's got two targets, zero range. Okay, that might be something. So maybe that makes her flurry better or makes her charge better because she's got two targets. So just something to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is there any other powers uh, just, that bounce just, off of that? Uh, just one more shout out for 10 Point Brainiac. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's, yeah, six. He's got three bolts with end cap, right? And then he can phase into position and then end cap. Uh, same thing with uh, Gorilla Grodd with his leap climb. Hmm. So, oh, you could, I could tell it's late at night. I'm yawning too much. Um,. So one thing I think might be interesting, they they may need to clarify how this is going to work exactly. Is blades? Mhm. Because it's you deal damage equal to the result instead of normal damage. Now I assume you have to split that between both targets or three targets or whatever. But anytime it says instead of normal damage, I feel like that's a question that needs to be clarified because yeah. we don't have a long range blades type attack. So not not specifically, no. Right. So 
that might that's something I'm kind of interested in to see how that would work because I assume because it would be dumb otherwise if they were saying yeah you could double target blades um, double target blades you roll the d6 and you deal that damage to both people that would really make close attacks better <laughs> that would really make blades a lot better mm -hmm. hmm. no I agree with that yeah for if, sure if you do deal damage equal to the result instead of normal damage yeah, I would assume you split it, but... And I've had a few people, Peter Melton just brought it up, and... Well, he's brought it up twice, and I haven't mentioned it. Sorry, Peter. Uh, yes, this is a buff to the reality gem. It makes the reality gem better. We also have been kind of talking as if, you know, we may only end up with two months of being able to play these new rules with the gems. But, true, it does make reality gem better, problem with reality gem i think in this instance is reality gem typically goes on a support piece because of the tk because of the perplex so i don't know how often i'm going to want to throw that on a close range person when i could do dock arms waldo arms other you know necro the black sword or whatever you know better close range things so i don't honestly know i don't think the reality gem is this is a buff to the reality gem, but I don't ever see myself putting this on a close range or a hybrid character to get that extra target. Uh, maybe we do now. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's no. Oh, that's funny. Miguel Vergara, Tiger Lily from the original indie set got better. That's the that's the sculpt that has the uh, double pistols, uh, but zero range. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never got to play with. I never got to play any of the indie stuff. I played, uh, I did play Yu-Gi-Oh once, like some Yu-Gi-Oh pieces, but not. Right. Wasn't playing around no, the indie sets. Yeah, she she was just she's just a meme. She's a meme dial at this point. I've, I've seen her several times. Is she from uh, Lone Ranger or is she from something else? No, the indie set is literally. Oh, the, the indie set. I'm sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah. Meme. That's pretty much all the changes we got today. We did see um, some more spoils for uh, Future Foundation. I assume, Dan, we'll record an episode not too long, like an actual podcast. Episode, um, right? Yeah, I, you know, uh, the rule stuff. I, I'm thinking we almost got the whole set, right? Um, looking at the rounds list now, I think it's up to date. We're missing one rare, rare 52, and we're missing two chases. That's it. Yeah. We've got, we've seen, so... we've seen six chases out of the, um, oh, it is only eight. I don't know why I said nine. I guess I can't count. Um, oh no, they took one off, I guess. Cause it said up to 70 pieces in the set, like collect all 70. And the last one is doomed the annihilating conqueror at 69. So I, Oh, Ellie Wonder Woman. I wonder if they're including that. I guess that makes sense now. Not, so, not Ellie Wonder Woman. Or or, uh, Invisible Woman, sorry. Invisible Woman, yeah. Uh, but we're missing uh, one so, rare and two chases. So we got uh, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65. Oh, so we're missing 64 and 62? Yep, those are the two chases we're missing, and then 42 is the rare. Well, I guess at this... I guess at this point, can these rogue hero click spoilers get those last two out? <laughs> well, I mean, I, so we so that, so that we can do a set review episode. Well, probably not this weekend. <laughs> I mean, starting next week, it typically after the Scott Porter videos, you start having uh, actual previews. So yeah, I'm I guess sure... we'll see. I guess we'll see if uh, what all comes out of those. Yeah, but the the one benefit, I guess, to having most of the set spoiled at this point is we could do one of our... Uh, the we did, It was very popular for House of X, the tier maker, where we write up or do a little tier of figures we like from the set and how they impact the meta. So we could probably mm -hmm. do one of those before the set drops, so that way people know when they're hopping into their ebay auctions and troll and toad singles and and oxid auctions that they know what figures they really should be going for if they're only focused on meta so 
Hopefully we can Yeah, we can this probably week. do that once we get those last two, right? Yeah, I'm hoping this week would be very nice. And then, um, and Peter also mentions that the tier maker was awesome. Yeah, it was also a ton of fun making it. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, but we're also, I, I mean, just because we've been doing these live streams doesn't mean we're not going to do this typical set review things. Um, all of that stuff, all of that's still happening. It's just we need all of the set to be able to do it. And, you know, kind of a bummer really is that we haven't been able to see really what impact House of X has had on the meta outside of, like, one or two little eight-man tournaments that have happened. It's like House of X just kind of calmed down. And it's like, bam, here's Future Foundation. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely House of X has not had its time to shine at all. Yeah. So hopefully we'll um, get there. Yeah, soon. I mean, in the yeah, I mean, in the little eight the man, the little eight, uh, little eight man tournaments haven't told us anything we didn't really already know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's even been a few whams at Majestics with their stuff, and like Juggernauts won, um, and then like the you know the uh, Alpha uh, drop off teams have done well in some of these online ones and those so it's like there's nothing really been that we i guess i would say i haven't seen anything that we didn't already predict in our house of x set reviews so now do you think there's going to be any desire to start having tournaments with once we get a closer look at some of these rule changes i guess not because we don't know the full rules change i think the problem is is for I think the problem is for me thinking about it is like if you're having an event now, say in February um, versus in May, right? Then it's like, uh, you know, we experienced this last time. Oh, it's the last event of the old rules. It's the old way going away. You know, this team might be different in the new rules. So there's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. Mm-hmm. Um you know, when it comes to some of those things. And I don't think there's any, there's not even anything really big planned between now and May, is there? There's not really anything planned this year yet. So, I right. mean, outside, yeah. outside, so of there, the, I mean, outside of the Rock Cup next fall, or this coming fall. So that's about it. Yeah, I mean, there's some online stuff, but yeah, I don't... And our, I mean, there's nothing even, there's nothing even official online. Right, like it, our There's... our rock online events that haven't really been. We haven't had a, a win a map in since the beginning of January because the the appeal and the desire is just not there right now. People are just tired of playing online. That like House of X was neat, but it, I don't. It's not enough to get people playing. So it's like yeah. we online needs something. Online needs regular events to come back because online is not. Uh, really supposed to be the main event it's supposed to be a supplement for in-person things like if you're and it's supposed to be you know helping out the guy that might live in montana and doesn't have a community that he can hop on and play but right now nobody has a community and for the most part and it's just people are getting tired of it people want to sit down and and play i played tonight actually I, i played a little sealed event at my local store because we all trusted that we would all put on masks we did and we you know stayed apart and it was nice but that's kind of what we need is people you know events to go again because online isn't as popular right now just because people are burnt out i think and people might just be taking this time to i I almost wonder how many people with uh hero clicks is going to lose because a lot of people were taking this time as a break. Um, you know, using this to be like, all right, some new sets will come out. I'll keep an eye on it. But right now, since there's no tournaments, I'll spend, you know, save some money and just get back into it when tournaments start up. But introducing these rules changes, you know, you might, uh, Hero Clicks might lose a decent amount of players just because they were already taking a break. And now they're like, well, with the rules changes, I don't want to get back into it and have to learn a new game. So, it'll definitely be interesting to see how all this turns out. Yeah, I mean, I think that, and I think when it comes to our tier makers and our set reviews, right, you know, 
it's going to be a hard amount of color with the new rules. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, not before now, I mean, we're not going to be able to say, well, this piece doesn't have willpower. It kind of sucks. <laughs> I don't know. This, yeah. this, this piece acting twice might be pretty legit. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely be tailoring because what's the point really in doing a tier maker for two months? Like, here's how we feel the figures will be for the next two months, and then right. rules will change, and it's that's not how it is anymore. So we'll, we'll tailor right. it for that. We did get a few questions um, from McConnell Lamar. Uh, what yeah, is... I, answered, I answered McConnell's earlier. Uh, that's who I was thinking. Right. My uh... least favorite. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, we, we kind of answered the first one, least favorite change that has been previewed. Um, for me, I don't know if I mentioned it, but yeah, it's, I think the hindering one is the one, my least favorite currently, um, which is good because it's probably one of the least affecting things, maybe. Um, but he also mentions, do you, th uh, Matt, uh, sorry, Matthew DePaz or DePaz says, do you think legacy cards are a cool gimmick or essentially worthless in any competitive or even pseudo casual due to them being over costed? The Wizkids whiff on them by not making them powerful enough. Um, so we'll, we'll so, go into a bigger in-depth about legacy cards in one of our episodes, but we could give kind of a sneak peek preview on how you feel about them. How do you feel about them, Dan? So here's the thing. Uh, for sure, everything is playable and casual. Mm -hmm. um, they, they made these pieces updated in cooler for casual 100%. Um, we have not got all the cards yet. Like, we haven't seen Morgan yet, right? She's the only one we're missing. We've seen all all uh, seven out of the eight. Morgan Le Fay is yeah. the only one we're missing. Right. So, I mean, for sure, uh, AOU She-Hulk that we saw today, pretty competitive. Um, very competitive, I think. Yeah. Um... The and we the thing has potential we talked about um you know the fantastic four dudes and even she hulk have some potential because they have the swap out ability and that just can't be ignored so um you know morg no he's casual at best i think yeah um but yeah, I mean, I think that I think we can rank those with our set review. Yeah, and see what we think about it. Yeah, I, I definitely want to say, Matt, that it is absolutely not essentially worth it, worthless. I have been incredibly surprised at how well they've done what they've done with the legacy cards, because, like you said. These figures in today's meta are way over costed. Just looking at the pure dial. No cards. Looking at the dial. The values are too low. They're in the 120s, 140s. That, that's a lot for what they're giving us. So WizKids luckily knew that. And they've significantly buffed their abilities. Gave them even better abilities. Like She-Hulk's ability, her new trait that deals with prime characters. Like wow. Like that's huge compared to what she was before and she was great before now she's amazing so i hope they continue this trend going forward you know realizing hey this figure in today's meta is way over costed let's fix that by giving them a few more powers like you know for she hulk she had charge flurry before but now they're giving her improved mar uh, blocking i don't know if she had that before for movement purposes um, they gave her that as well for the thing uh, he had for his clobbering thing. They also gave him sidestep and something else. Like they gave him just a little bit more, a couple more special powers, or I'm sorry, um, just standard powers to beef him up a bit. And I think that's right. great. I think what they're doing with, I, they're, it's exceeding my expectations. I can't wait to see what Morgan Le Fay is, and I can't wait to rank them. We'll, we'll obviously add them to our tier maker because they're part of the set, so to speak, because they their legality is based off of this set. 
So when this set is retired, those legacy cards will also retire. So we'll we'll add them to our tier maker. I assume we will because they are essentially extra pieces into this set that you have to buy from somebody else. So um, I love them. I can't wait to talk about them more. So all right. Um, so yeah, I think that's all our questions. It's getting kind of late for us. Um, so uh, thanks we're... everybody for oh, thanks uh, everybody for watching tonight. Yeah, you can finish it. Have a great rest of your night. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>